All right, hey guys, say so let's go over notes for enzymes. So enzymes, let's start it like this, see, just like the whiteboard. All right, enzymes, let's go over classes first. Enzymes are going to be a special class of proteins. And don't forget proteins, those are made of amino acids. And then the whole function of a protein is going to build a physical organism, okay? But enzymes, enzymes are going to be very, very special because what they're going to do is they're going to allow uh, chemical reactions to happen, oops, to happen, okay? Because whenever we've talked about all of these different things like hydrolysis or dehydration, you know, we talk about these different reactions happening, but these reactions don't just happen on their own. They happen because there's generally an enzyme involved. Now, small disclaimer, can these reactions happen without enzymes? Sure they can, but remember, we're trying to keep a physical organism alive. And if we're trying to keep a physical organism alive, then we're gonna have to make these reactions happen a lot more quickly. Because think about, like, if you guys, let's try to draw a little person, and he has like, like stomach pain, like he's so hungry. And so now we need to digest our food and if we're just waiting on a one in billion chance for a reaction to happen for us to digest food, we are going to die super fast. And so we need chemical reactions to happen really quickly in our bodies so that way we continue to live. And that's where enzymes come in. So enzymes, uh, by just knowing what they are, yes, they're a protein. Like that's the big take home message. But these cute little suckers are biological catalysts, okay? And biological, you know, that's referring to something living. And a catalyst is a chemical you would use in chemistry class to make a reaction happen. But since enzymes are found in living things, that's why they're a biological catalyst, now, a couple little things. Let's do some housekeeping on enzymes. First, they always end in the suffix ace. And usually, the name is what the enzyme is breaking down. Like, so super easy example. Let's take lactose. Like, we've all heard of lactose. We know lactose is the, is the sugar that we find in milk. Um, so the enzyme that breaks apart that lactose is called lactase, right? So we know lactose is a sugar because it ends in os, and now we know lactase is an enzyme because it ends in ace. But you can kind of see the relationship there. Or maybe, um, let's do another easy one. Let's Maybe you guys had a milkshake, and it was a malt, and so the sugar maltose would be broken apart by the enzyme, enzyme maltase. So not too shabby. Um, another one kind of looks the same. Say this is a, a special one. So pepsin, right? Pepsin is just, um, is just a protein, right? And so maybe we could say pepsinase. You know, you guys kind of get the deal. As long as it ends in ACE, it is an enzyme. Now, let's do big definition, and then we'll kind of draw a picture so you guys understand what an enzyme does. So big definition for an enzyme is that it is going to speed up, that's an A, a chemical reaction by lowering, oh, by lowering the activation energy. 
Okay, so there's two separate ideas here. The first one, I'm going to speed up a chemical reaction. Okay, that's the first thing they're going to do. But how are they going to speed up a chemical re reaction? By lowering the activation energy. And activation energy, so this part right here, all that's referring to is the energy needed whoa, for a reaction to take place. Okay, so enzymes speed up a reaction by lowering the activation energy. All right, and there's actually a really easy graphic to kind of understand this. Like, let's say there's a hill, yay, and then maybe I have this hill over here. I don't like that one. Let's do that one again. That looks a lot better. Okay, so here's our friend. Look at him. He is the happiest. And what he's going to do is his entire job today is to take this ball and get it to the top of the hill, right? And then once he gets up here, I want to get down to this point. Same thing. Here's another dude, right? And his entire job, I don't like the way he looks. There you go. So his entire job is to get this ball and roll it up over the hill and get it to this point. We'll call, ooh, look at that. Let's go with a nice green. Okay, so we're going to call this hill A, and we're going to call this hill B. All right, so if I ask you guys, which hill is going to take the most energy? And you're looking at the two pictures, and you're like, well, this one's going to take the most energy, hill A, because this ball, he has to push it up a, a really, really tall hill, right? And if I ask you guys, hey, guys, which hill is going to take the less energy or the least amount of energy, you're going to say hill B, because, look, there's not very much area right there. So if we were looking at these and I wanted to name them, let's go with a nice shade of purple here. So now that I... And I want to name these. Hill A would be, oh, that's pretty, without an enzyme. Because, look, this guy can still push the ball up over the hill and get to the final point, but that's going to take a lot of energy. Versus if I look over here at B, B would be with the enzyme. Because, look, I still get to go and go to the final point, but it's going to take a lot less effort, which is what the entire thing is about. So I can speed up a chemical reaction by lowering the activation energy. Okay, So if I look at these two different reactions, this one is going to take a lot less energy than this one over here. And since this one, hill B, is going to take less energy, that means he's going to be able to do that reaction faster. Okay, did the reaction over here still happen? Sure, it still could have happened, but this one over here, because the hill was shorter, I was able to do the exact same job in a lower amount of time. And that's all enzymes are doing. They're speeding up reactions by lowering the activation energy. So, now we can go on to our next point, which is, well, since we're talking about a living system, yes, say sometimes these living systems can break. And when we break, that's called, whoa, that's not the right word. This is called denature. If I denature something, that means I am going to break. What's happening? There you go. This is going to break my enzyme. And I always kind of like to think about, you know, we talked about the other day with puppies and kittens. And so since an enzyme is a protein, you know, it's part of a living system. And so if I take that protein and I change the temperature, remember if the temperature gets too hot or if the temperature can get too cold, then that is going to break, well, that's going to break my enzyme. 
right? So if I put the puppy in the oven, if I put the puppy in the freezer, say that's going to break them. Or if I change the pH, right? If I make my environment too acidic, or if I make my environment too basic, that's going to break my enzyme because this is part of a living system. And enzymes, let's pick a pretty color, this one. And so enzymes work best at optimal temp and pH, okay? Because if we go above or below that, that's when we start to denature things. So now we get to draw a really, really pretty pictures. So let's draw what an enzyme looks like. There you go. This is my enzyme. Now, do they always look like Pac-Man? No, but this is really, really easy. Okay, so that's my enzyme right there. Or maybe this could be my enzyme. And what's going to fit inside these areas is the are the the reactants that you want that you want to do the reaction to because I mean we've all looked at chemical reactions before right like we have the reactants and then those are going to make the products except now when we talk about reactants Reactants have a super special name when we talk about enzymes. This is called a substrate. And so if I have an enzyme, if I just make them look like that, then my substrate is going to be the one that matches, right? Because if I have another substrate that's maybe a square, is the square going to fit inside that triangle? No. But this triangle is going to be able to fit into that piece. This is called the lock and key model, which makes a lot of sense because if I have an enzyme, oops, no, no, now I go back. <gasps> is this the one? There you go. Okay. Oh no, I don't know how to draw anymore. Yes, I do. Hold on, guys. We got this. <laughs> okay, so lock and key model. Um, that just means that every substrate is specific to the enzyme. Because really, if you think about it, like let's say, let's say this is my front door lock. Okay, so this is my lock right here, enzyme is now the lock. And if I have my key, so here's my key, which is the substrate, that will fit in there, and then when that key goes into the lock, I'm able to open my door and go inside. But if this is my front door, and you guys take your key, and try to fit it in the lock, then this doesn't work anymore. And so lock and key, it's the same idea. Say one key will go to one lock and vice versa. And the reason that happens in living body systems is because if you had everything the exact same shape, right? Like so if every enzyme and every substrate were the exact same shape, that means your body couldn't target specific reactions to take place. But now that every reaction have, has a specific shape and a specific enzyme that goes with it, then you're able to target reactions and do just those when you need them. Now where, where the substrate fits in to your enzyme, this area right here, this is called the active site. In the active site, is just where the substrate fits into the enzyme. So now we can see a couple of reactions take place.
right? Let's draw one. How about we want to, what if we want to build something? All right, what was the word if I want to build molecules? Building was dehydration synthesis. And so let's say here's my enzyme. I'm going to make it with a big E. And then my substrates, substrates, Maybe I have two skinny substrates. All right, so there's the first part of the reaction. I have my enzyme, I have my substrates. Now, here's my enzyme again. And what's gonna happen are those two substrates are gonna go fit inside the active site. So red, active site, blue, substrate. And whenever that happens, when that occurs, when I have my substrate fitting into my active site, this is called the enzyme substrate complex. Okay, so enzyme substrate complex. That's when the substrate is literally sitting in the enzyme's active site. And now enzymes, what they can do is they can either force the two molecules together. Enzymes can weaken bonds. I mean, the enzymes can do a bunch of different things biologically to these substrates to make them come together. So now that I've had my enzyme substrate complex, here's my enzyme. And then released from that released from that is going to be my final product which is now maybe a bigger blue piece or I can do the opposite I can break which is hydrolysis so here's my enzyme E. Here's my substrate. And the reaction can take place. So here's my enzyme. Here's my substrate fitting inside my active site. And then after that, there's my enzyme. And now maybe I have two skinny blue pieces. And this would be my product. So I can do either reaction we've take place or talked about either hydrolysis or we can do dehydration synthesis just kind of depends on it, right? And we can do like a real example, maybe um, let's do lactose, right? Lactose um, is a disaccharide, C-C-H-A-R-I-D-E is a disaccharide, which means it's made up of two sugars. Um, it's made up of glucose and galactose. Yeah, glucose and galactose. And so whenever you guys drink milk, all right, then you get this awesome sugar. Kind of looks something like this. Same sugar we've drawn, right? And so there's your sugar. And then when it comes in, there you go, your enzyme will look something like that. And so then when that happens, these things will drop down into their active sites. And when they're done, it'll break it into two different pieces. But if you notice, every time we draw this enzyme, it's always left over at the end. That's because enzymes, enzymes are reusable, okay? I mean, if you think about your door and your key, if your key are your substrates up here, and your door is the enzyme, do you guys have to buy a new door every time you use the key? No. Or do you need to 
obviously this kind of doesn't make sense, but you don't need a new key either. So enzymes are always going to be reusable. That's why we can have those reactions happen a bunch of different times. Now, if we talk about concentration levels, right? Um, well, like your enzymes can only work so fast, right? So if we talk about concentration levels, okay, concentration levels. Um, if your substrate concentration goes up, then the reaction will go up, but only to a point. Because if you have a ton of substrates, like let's say you have a thousand pieces of substrate, but you only have a hundred enzymes, you're only able to do as much of the reaction as you have of the enzymes. So sure, a substrate concentration goes up, so will the reaction, but eventually that thing is going to even out, and kind of vice versa. Now, there is another type of enzyme, because we've just kind of seen normal ones. This guy is super special. This is called allo steric okay and allo is is talking about different okay allo means different and so allosteric enzymes that just means that your that you have to have something else bind to this allosteric site to this other site for the reaction to take place so if i have my enzyme there you go and he looks something like that and then my substrate comes in and sits in there in the active site, nothing's going to happen until you get this guy over here. This guy over here, he's called a, um, a we'll call him a coenzyme. That's a good word for him. He's a coenzyme. But now that that coenzyme is there, then the reaction can, whoops, then the reaction can actually take place. And maybe I was breaking these two. There you go. And now the reaction takes place. So if it's allosteric, that means you have to have a coenzyme bind into the allosteric site. Right? This guy right here is the allosteric site. And once he binds to the allosteric site, then the reaction can actually take place. I think that's what I want to do for this. Now, when it comes to your assignment today, your assignment has a bunch of different puzzle pieces. All right. First of all, you have to read the lab. Read the lab for the love, guys read it. And once you read it, I don't think it's too terribly bad. First of all, you're going to color the pieces and you're going to cut those pieces out. Then you're just making two different reactions. You're doing a hydrolysis and you're doing a dehydration synthesis. So what I would do is grab a sheet of paper, the white paper is back there on the bookshelf, Make it long ways, and then divide it into three sections, okay? Because you're going to be able to put one reaction on the top row. You'll be able to put the other reaction on the bottom. And if you look at the first reaction, I think it's the first reaction, you're going to have reactants. That's reactants, by the way. And enzyme. And then after that, you're going to have that enzyme substrate complex. And then after that, you'll have the enzyme and products. Okay, so after you color and cut the pieces, figure out which reaction you're doing. And then you'll put, you know, that puzzle piece because that's your enzyme. And then maybe, I don't remember if it's the triangle one or not. It's either this one or the square one. And then you have your substrates. Then the next one. There's your enzyme. 
And then here's your enzyme substrate complex. And then at the very end, there's your enzyme. And then maybe this formed one massive triangle, something like that. And then once you do both of the reactions, because then you're going to do the exact same thing down here, except you'll do hydrolysis or dehydration. I don't remember which one the assignment tells you to do first. And then after that, you just label. So you label the enzyme. Enzyme is where everything fits in. And then you'll have enzymes down here. And then you're going to have to label the substrates. So substrates are the things you start off with. Complex. Complex is the whole thing. And then you'll have products. Products are the things you make at the end. So one time you're going to build, and then another time you're going to break. Other than that, that lab should be pretty easy. So let me know if you guys have any questions.